Superchargers are the original form of forced induction, and while we've covered the basic types before, there's a lot of misinformation and confusion when it comes to the specifics of them. So here's a quick rundown on some supercharger terminology. On belt-driven positive displacement superchargers, aka root style and twin screw devices, you'll very often hear people talk about them with a displacement figure. But why would you refer to a supercharger in litres? These superchargers are known as positive displacement devices, and that's because they displace a fixed amount of air for every revolution of the supercharger. Let's take for instance a 2.8 litre root blower. Every time the supercharger has completed one revolution, it's pushed through 2.8 litres of air into the engine. You may also see this referred to in cubic inches, so in our case, it'd be a 170 CI supercharger. This differs to a turbo or centrifugal supercharger, as the amount of air they can move over the same period of time could be drastically different at two ends of the rev range, due to the fact that turbines need time to build boost. On the other hand, a positive displacement supercharger can push through those 2.8 litres of air per revolution, whether you're at 1500 rpm or 8500 rpm, as the belt is always spinning the pulley. When you want to make more boost on a turbo, there are some pretty simple ways to do it. But how do you turn up the boost on a supercharger? Superchargers tend to move a specific amount of air per revolution, so the solution is to move more air by creating more revolutions, which is done in two main ways. When people talk about superchargers, you may often hear about pulleys being mentioned. In our example, we'll be focusing on the one in the front of the engine connected to the crank, and the one you'll see connected to the front or back of the supercharger. Essentially, without changing the blower itself, you can increase or decrease the level of boost by changing the size of the upper pulley. By decreasing the size of the upper pulley, less rotation of the crank is required to turn the supercharger one revolution, meaning that while you're still pushing the same amount of air into the engine per revolution, you're generating more revolutions of the supercharger, pushing more air in and making more power. You'll often hear about these reductions talked about in percentages, i.e. a 17% pulley is a 17% reduction in size over the OEM sized pulley. The other, less frequent option is to increase the size of the crank pulley. Doing this achieves the same result, as the crank now spins the supercharger pulley more to match one revolution of the crankshaft, although this will effectively change the amount of draw on every other pulley in the engine as well. While volumetric efficiency is applicable to superchargers, turbos and NA cars, it's something that comes up a lot when discussing blowers, so what does it mean? VE is defined as the efficiency with which an engine can move the charge of air and fuel into and out of the cylinders. That may sound complicated, but it's easy when you break it down. First, much like looking at compression ratios, we'll consider the cylinder at 100% volume when the piston is at bottom dead center. When your piston is on the intake cycle, the piston moves down and draws in air to the cylinder. The air fills the void in the cylinder, but in a non-performance NA car, there won't be enough air to completely fill the chamber due to different resistance it encounters along the way. If the air was able to fill 80% of the full chamber with air fuel charge, the volumetric efficiency would be considered to be 80%. A high performance NA car can sometimes achieve 100% efficiency or more with intelligently constructed intakes and air pulses. For instance, the H22 engine placed in the Honda Prelude is known to reach peak VE of around 102%. But where do superchargers come in? A supercharger pushes more air into the engine, so when considering VE, they can actually result in much more than 100% volumetric efficiency, usually adding around 50% more at 6 to 7 psi than the equivalent unblown engine. That's because the air is pushed in faster than the engine could usually draw it in naturally, resulting in more air available for the piston to compress, creating a bigger explosion and making more power. So now when you see someone tuning VE tables on an ECU, you'll know what they're doing.